that I do. Um, first we'll do the trimmed foot. I usually do a trimmed foot on all my bowls. Because um, I haven't found a better way to cheat. To cheat, you know, with this little um, bump on the bowl just doesn't work for me. So, I still trim those traditionally. And the way to go about it, I think, they're the easiest way to go about trimming is you got to get this thing centered in on the wheel. And if you're, you know, if you've practiced a lot, eh, you can usually get it just pretty close just by sort of holding your hand steady. Um, the other way to do it is to, <clears throat> sort of the easier way to do it is to just brace your hands on the splash pan, hold your finger steady, let it come around and touch, and then this is exaggerated, right? I mean, it, but um, when it comes around and touches, boom, okay, so it touched right there, move it that way. So I think we all know this, but one of the, the one of the things I've found is that if you make some landmarks on here, it can make the whole thing go just a little bit easier. Um, and so now when it comes around and touches, I can give it a quadrant and say, okay, you know, that I touched in between, like right there and there. So it seems like you can dial it in faster this way. Touch right there. So those landmarks really help. You're just barely nudging the Yeah, I try to get as, you know, like I'll sort of ease up into it and then where it does start to touch, then I'll... No, I mean when you adjust, it's just oh, like the barest little nudge. Right. And it's, um, you know, you're dealing with a, a, a radius, right? And so it's half as much as you would think you'd have to go. And so you want the bottom of the center, not the top of the bowl. Right, and you know, like if I was going to do my trimming here, I'd be centering here, right? But I know I'll, the bulk of my trimming is happening in here, so that's where I'm, that's where I'm concerning myself. Because some of us, I mean, they have problems because they don't have the same Right, yeah. And they never are. I mean, none of them are. <laughs> so. For bowls, it's this is just this little pad. I think you need much more. Just make sure that it's <clears throat> stuck to the wheel really well, and you don't want to you don't want to really you don't want to thin it way down, right? Because there's no holding power left in that in that clay anymore. So you want to leave a, a substantial thickness there. I assume the the, the piece is leather hard at this point. It's a yeah. It's actually kind of a stiff leather hard. Uh, trimming soft, but for bowls anyway, is, is I find it difficult because as you trim, the the trimmings that the trimmings that are coming off sort of stick. You have to stop and clean them away. Um, so I try to wait till it's a pretty stiff leather hard. Yeah. Um, so. <clears throat> I haven't always done this, but I learned this from one of our grads um, who's been making pots since he was 12. He does it just a, finds that center, and just take out a little divot, and that gives your finger somewhere to sit. Oh my God. And it's that so clever? nice. It's so nice. Yeah. And, because I've always put my fingers right, on, sure. on the bowl to trim, 
but it, just having that place that's real still and your finger stays there so nicely. Um, and I do a lot of bowls that have a have a real wavy edge, but they're still fairly flat. So I trim them like this, but I put it on a piece of foam, and you can't lug it down into the foam, but it stays real nice on the foam. Um, so that that point then becomes really important because I'm able to hold the bowl in place from that. Um, and in, in here you're doing the same thing, you know, in case you catch or use too much pressure and your lug came loose, you know, you're at least holding it down. And so then the first step becomes about truing up that outside of the foot. And so the way I go about it is to hold that tip and just trim straight down and then maybe just a little bit in and so now that's running nice and true and I'll kind of work that whole outside first and so I'm trying to get I know there's extra clay down here by the foot and then I'm just tapering that back in as I know there's not much extra clay here um, so I'm not trying not to take too much from it down there and so now <clears throat> that outside is done mostly I'll come back to it a little bit but um, then I go on to the inside and because of the way this trimming tool is shaped, that angle is sort of uh, intrusive if you hold it straight this way. And so I always turn my handle back so that edge is sort of in line with where I want that foot to be, right? If I trim this way, that edge as I go down is going to start removing clay that I don't want to remove. So I always kick that tail back, so I'm sure that it's just the toe going in. So now that I've got the foot defined, that's where it is. Then I'll go back, and now I'll change to sort of riding on the outside of the foot because I'm gonna start removing that little holder that I made. And now remember that <clears throat> your best success is gonna come from a pot that has even wall thickness all the way around. And Char, this was one of your major problems when I showed up three years ago. So you're getting S cracks on the bottom, and we talked about it. And to get that outside shape identical to the inside shape is going to always yield the best results. You're going to reduce your chances for that little S crack that forms in the center. And so if you trim this inside of your foot flat, you're still going to have a fair amount of thickness out here on the edge because the inside of the bowl is is rounded. Well, if it's rounded. They're not always rounded. And so remember to remember to trim that outer portion down lower and then come back to the middle and then roll that tip into it. And you should trim through once in a while, you know, I mean, I think that's a good thing it's a to know, know what it feels like to go too far, right? Because there's a feeling there and after a while you'll start to sort of, okay, it's, it feels a little spongy, I should stop. Or stop and push on it just a little bit. If you feel flex, depending on how dry it is, that, that that flexion is, is sort of relative to that, but 
Um, if it moves, you're, you're thin enough. If it feels real stiff, now well, there's probably more material there that you can remove. Some powders pop it or thump it. Yep. Yeah. That's never done much for me. It's always been about sort of touch. Um, so here I come to the inside. I'm now I'm trying to I'm trying to get that inside wall of my foot a little more vertical. So using that part, I'm kind of trimming into it like that. And then one of the things that I've noticed, and I think a good rule of thumb is, okay, so if I know my inside shape is pretty uniform in its, in its curvature. And so if I was able to trim that deep on the outside of the foot, well, on the inside of the foot, I should be able to come close to that same depth, but realizing that that slope is rising. So maybe not quite as far down as I'm out here. So I've got more clay on the inside that I can remove. And I can feel fairly confident about that based on what this act is. So I'll go down some more. And I definitely felt it get kind of soft right there at the end. So I stopped. And then based on what I know about that inside shape, then I can go back and redo the, the whole arc. And then <clears throat> that inside edge and that outside edge aren't quite at the same angle. And I, I, for me, I like them to be at that same, same angle. And it's usually easier to make the outside match the inside. So based on what that inside is, I'll start to take this outside part and roll that trimming tool into it to match the shape of the inside. You're just visualizing it? Yeah, kind of feeling here and, you know, with the trimming tool on the outside, I can kind of see, looking at both inside and outside at the same time and, and using my, my pinky to kind of judge it. It seems pretty close. It's a fairly tall foot, and so sometimes when I have that nice tall foot, I'll take that opportunity and trim just a little divot in there for design. And then <clears throat> my biggest pet peeve about the foot is the flat foot. Um, it's like dancing flat footed right from the front. Um, and the problem with it is, is that that edge is one both sharp you can scratch pretty easily and two very easy to chip. Um, and a chipped foot is always going to be sharp and scratchy and not fun to touch. And so I always take that outside edge off, chamfer it, chamfer the inside edge, and then depending on how stiff the clay is, um, when it's softer you can just then take your finger and kind of roll it across there. Now I'm using the side of my finger where it's real bony. Um, the pad of the finger doesn't seem to work as well and you can't get that roll the same way. So as I come around I kind of roll like that. Um, pinching and holding everything in place as I go. So now that foot is nice and rounded, it's nice and soft, almost burnished from that finger roll. Um, you can trim it all into place and then maybe go with the, the heel of your trimming tool if it's real, if the clay is real stiff. And then I also have this habit of little finger grippers. near the lip and it's something when you grab the ball there's something there to feel and almost grip onto.
if you're going to use a, a glossy glaze or whatever the hell the term is, you don't want it slipping. You know, through right. Your fingers, yeah. Right. Especially if there's condensation from the cold ice cream. <laughs> Absolutely. And then to check, you know, it, it, I think I did okay. And so, moving on to that, these pieces that don't need to be trimmed, um, using that rib I have with the, with the tip taken out of it. Um, I've got this little bead on the bottom, and with that, sometimes there's this little bit of schmutz on the outside. That's it. It is. Schmutz. Schmutz. A technical term for dirt. Yeah. Okay, so with these, all I do, and actually, if you go to any any sort of uh, like Walmart or Target, you go to the kids section. They have those high high bounce pinkies. It's a it's a, like a big Super Bowl um, made out of like pink eraser material or something like that. It's the perfect little ball to, to tap into the the bottom of most cups and get a nice little dish. I didn't bring mine with. And I think some ceramic suppliers are selling a, a rubber ball on a stick that you can <laughs> beat the drum with and pretend you're a Rastaman and eat that drum. Um, but <laughs> you're, you're already supplied with your own high balance pinky on your thumb. And what are we doing this for, my friend? What, uh, what to give a first? little bit of an indent to the foot. Okay. Because sometimes... Um, if the compression was just right or not right on the inside, sometimes that very center, if you leave it flat, yeah. that very center will pop, and then you'll have a, a little rock and roll situation going. Okay, so it's um, to create a... Right, to ensure that that bottom doesn't pop out for some. Um, well, you don't, all, nobody likes an Audi. Right, and it also creates the, the table edge at the pot edge. Right. It's, it's here. Right. <laughs> right. The other thing that, that this does is um, it creates less drag in the kiln. Right? So imagine if this was oh, a big sure. piece, sure. right? Yeah. It's not so it's not so much true with cups because they're so light usually that it doesn't matter. But bigger, heavier pieces with a very flat bottom right. in the kiln as it expands and contracts with heating up and cooling, all that drag of movement can cause the bottom to crack. And so if it's if it has a trimmed foot or a, what I call a studio foot or indented foot, um, there's less drag, there's less surface area in contact with the kiln shelf. And so you're it's a it's sort of an insurance policy to not tear. Well, once in the bisque. And once in the ways. Can you use a tennis ball? Or more the material on the tennis I, ball? I would think that you could use a tennis ball. A racket ball might be really good. Yeah. Bowling ball. The high bounce pinky is nice because it's a sort of a kid's toy. And, and like I find myself bouncing it in the studio. A tennis ball would be nice. <laughs> so, just a slight indent. Right there, and then the last thing I do is thump it, but then slowly start to roll on that outside edge, and then it go more and more drastic, and then that'll sort of curve that edge up real nice, and it gives it that shadow line underneath, it gives it a little lift, and so now it really is just sitting on that highest point that isn't out on the edge. That one will probably
probably do the same thing to this one. I'll do the other style of foot, and it's similar. Oh, maybe I, this is softer. Let's do this one. Yeah. Indent a little. Schmutz removal. Give it a roll. And then I do this to a lot of my wood fired pieces because I I prop them up in a way in the kiln on seashells that allows some neat effects. And I'll take then a, a dowel, and I like it to be a little softer than this. I will say it's a little stiff. Start to roll a tri foot or three pointed foot tripod. The word I'm looking for. Yes. Mostly because a tripod will always sit level, or all three points will always be in contact with the table. With four, and yeah, one's always a little bit higher or a little bit lower, and it rocks and rolls, right? to a bowl um, because I don't I like I don't like my spoon skipping over stuff as I am eating my ice cream or my cereal right um, and the, it'll definitely create a new texture on the inside or a new shape on the inside a little clover type shape or would you want the bottom end to be a little thicker a little thinner you'd want it to be a um, Pretty thin, actually, for this. Um, when it's thicker, it seems like because it's already leather hard, and you're asking it to move. The thicker it is, the less it wants to move. The more likely it'll crack. Um, and this is a a risky endeavor in itself, anyways. So yeah, definitely. What's thinner? Well, you're. That clay on the foot here is already sort of set up, and asking it to move like I'm doing, eh, I get a lot of pieces that get little cracks on the inside. And so there's a fair amount of loss, but now I've started putting just a little piece of glass down there. And the glass, if there is a crack that develops, the glass will fill that crack and leave the bottom nice and smooth and less flawed. And then usually, when I have the time, um, at bone dry, then I'll come back with a scotch Brite pad and round this all off so it's nice. And, you know, because I, I mean, although I don't mind these, this angular business, I, I prefer it when it's a little softer. Right, and you don't, want, you still don't want to scratch your table. Right, right. And then for the for wood fire, and you could do this here too. Um, I set these pieces up on seashells that mm -hmm. kind of ride inside mm -hmm. that arc and then when I'm real lucky I'll get a drip of, of ash blaze that comes off of each one of those points and now the, now the foot is actually a little glass sort of glass that it sits on um, but that's only if you're real lucky and for the, for the situation here you know if you were to just dunk this whole thing in glaze, let it dry before you set it down so that glaze stays intact on the bottom, you could set this up on seashells that sort of, you know, sit right on top of the glaze. And then as it, when it comes out, you're left with a real nice glaze smooth foot, um, which is different than a bare clay foot. Mm -hmm. So as you're holding it, it can be nice. 
sits on the table definitely won't scratch anything. And then that, that seashell sort of um, fossil, if you will, that's left behind. I just take a Dremel tool and, and knock down the edges so they're not sharp. And that's where your texture is. So those are the, the three main feet that I do. I covered the other foot that I do with the, with the pinch pots. Yeah. Right, the hand trim, the hand trim foot. Cool. Thank you. Questions? Anything else I can show you? What size is now? I I prefer for something this big. I prefer a larger doll, um, like a one inch doll. Huh. Yeah. Thank you. There's my.